back to Perfume de Vegas. <laughs> I'm Holly Golightly, and today's video is going to be my Five for Life Indie Perfumes. I've done similar videos to this in the past, and there are some fragrances that I've discovered since the last time I filmed this that I would definitely consider ones that I would want to repurchase, but unfortunately my favorites kind of remain the same so what I have done to make it a little bit more consumable is I made sure that of my favorites I picked only the ones that are um, general catalog scents that you can purchase um, either year-round or regularly at scheduled times there is only one exception to that list um, but it's like one of my top top favorites so it would be a lie if I didn't include it um, but we'll get to that in in a moment um, so I have some perfume and oil I have perfume um, eau de parfum and I believe I have do I have any extract perfume extract I have a, a body oil but the fragrance is available in different formats um, so yeah and I have a, so a botanical perfume as well so let's just go ahead and get start started I'm gonna count down from five to one one being my most most favorite of all time I would give up other perfumes just to have that one um, and then five being like absolutely I will continue to repurchase it as long as I'm able so starting with number five I have from House of Matriarch again I just talked about this recently so it's probably not a huge surprise but it is the scent forbidden from House of Matriarch um, It's a beautiful, unique white floral. It's slightly smoky, slightly incensey, but it has that absinthe note that's green and a little bit sweet. And then it has the white florals inside that just make it um, very f blooming. I wouldn't say it's a floral, floral fragrance. It's more like a spicy green floral fragrance. The white florals are not like super indolic or anything like that um, let me pull up the notes for you or the description of the fragrance for you house of matriarch says that forbidden a natural white floral fragrance is rooted in layers of historically feared and even outlawed essences forbidden begins with an ero erogenous absinthe and damiana opening then sweetly drops into an intoxicating heart a cord of tuberose wild mushroom and papyrus I've also mentioned before I love papyrus in fragrance. Oh. A smooth finish of precious woods, snake leather, and sweet baked earth complete the rapturous and totally unique fragrance encounter. So yeah, this smells just beautiful. It's sexy, earthy, incensey, floral, but not indolic. It's green and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So that at number five is House of Matriarch Forbidden. At number four, I have one from Alchemia Perfumes, and this is Gateau de Roy. I have a video entirely about this fragrance. I'll link it up here or down below, um, where I've reviewed this fragrance in entirely entirety, but this is the King Cake fragrance. Um, it's a Mardi Gras release. However, I do believe that Alchemia has put it into their general catalog so you can get this fragrance year round. If not, you can get it every year at Mardi Gras time, like usually between February through March, April. This is one for the gourmand lovers. It's sweet, it's almondy, it has this scent of like icing, like a vanilla, like icing. Yeah, it's got that like almond cake, sweetness, vanilla, it's not flowery or powdery smelling at all. It's just very smooth and rich um, and sugary almond cake vanilla scent. I'm going to read to you what Alchemia 
says about the Gateau de Roy fragrance. I'm just gonna have to cut these and insert them. <laughs> So this is Delectable Fresh King Cake, Chicory Coffee, Spilled Sazerac, Spanish Moss, Rusted Iron, and Louisiana Vetiver Root. Laissez le bon temps frule. The scent is a gentle intro into the world of essential oil perfumes. A subtle scent, it works well for teenagers too. So this is definitely um, something that is quite easy to wear, but quite unique as well. This is coming from the Soapbox Company. It looks like Ghetto de Roy has become an exclusive to Soapbox Company. So, um, yeah, I'll have it linked for you. <sighs> this is one of my favorite indie gourmand fragrances, um, Ghetto de Roy from Alchemia. I love to wear it on Fat Tuesday. I love to wear it throughout the entire Mardi Gras season, Easter season. Um, it's just so delicious and it performs beautifully in that sort of early spring, late winter weather where the sillage is nice, but it's not like super heavy, doesn't overwhelm you with sweetness because sometimes sugary sweet fragrances can be overwhelming, but Gateau de Roy from Alchemia, that doesn't happen. It's just delicious. So that is the next one, number four on my list, Alchemia's Gateau de Roy. And I will link all of these that are available, of course, down below. I know one is not, but the rest I'll link. Then we have the Triumvirate of my favorite fragrances. And it's very, very hard to put them in an order. Um, it's, yeah, it's not easy um we'll go ahead and go with yeah i'm gonna go ahead and go with number three because the two n number two number one i don't know how i'm gonna choose um and that is the scent old havana from solstice scents i just talked about this or i briefly mentioned it in my solstice scents fragrance um review video and old havana i have this one here in the body uh, burnishing glacé. Oh my gosh, it's so good. What you get with Old Havana is a dark rum, lim lemon, a dark rum, minty, tobacco, salty ocean, lime sort of smell. It is like, literally, it's composed to smell like having um, having a mojito on a beach bar in 1950s Havana. It's so gorgeous. It is so beautiful. The tobacco note in here is done so well and it mixes with the salty air note, the lime note, and the rum. It just makes it like, it makes you salivate. It's so good. This is where, um, fragrance notes like tobacco, which is technically a um, a plant, a, 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 not an herb, but um, um, it's a plant, you know, but it becomes a gourmand, like it becomes a foodie scent because it's just, it's edible. The scent is so rich. The Old Havana fragrance description from Solstice Scents, it's tobacco, woods, spices, sea mist, and lime. Old Havana is an exquisite and Old Havana is an exquisite, sophisticated, and elegantly refined tobacco scent with all the nuances of the highest quality handmade premium cigars, carefully aged and stored at optimum temperature in a Spanish cedar lined humidor. This fragrance illustrates the wrapper tobacco within and wooden storage cigar, wooden cigar storage box. Old Havana also features warm spices, a delicate squeeze of fresh lime top note, and a splash of salty sea spray and moist beach sand. The lime is very subtle and detectable upon cold sniff and initial application. Beyond the opening, the smooth tobacco, soft woods, spice, and sea spray swirl in an intensely beautiful, mysterious, and realistic fragrance. Oh my god, it is so good. 
transport yourself. Old Havana is our final word on tobacco scents and one of our favorite blends to date. It's so, so good. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, I don't know how many times I can repeat myself. It's like the best. It is the best. The final word for sure. This is, um, again, like I said, this is in the burnishing glissé format. I have the um, oil fragrance format as well. And I really want to get the Eau de Parfum um, for this because I love it that much. It's so good. It's my favorite tobacco. I've said it before. I've said this before. This is my favorite tobacco scent of all time. It's to die for, to die for. So if you love tobacco scents, please, 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 please do yourself a favor and try Old Havana from Solstice Scents. The Burnishing Glacé, I think cost, when I purchased it, I think it cost $9. Um, the oil format perfume costs $18. And the, um, I think the Eau de Parfum is $85 for 60 mil. It's not outside of like um, a normal budget. You know, it's not crazy expensive. So Solstice Scents, Old Havana, so recommend. I so recommend all of these. And I really recommend them for like different reasons. So, you know, don't, <laughs> don't hold back. Find something that you think suits you and go for it. The next two, uh, all right, so now it's down to the final two and I'm not really sure how I can decide between uh, which one I would put in first place and which one I would put in second place. Um, I'm gonna do it, hmm. I'm gonna give you second place but just know that it's only because I need number one. I need number one in my life. It has to be in my life. But when it comes to how much I actually like the fragrances, they're 100% equal. So number two of my five for life indie fragrances is from Darling Clandestine. Of course there would be something from Darling Clandestine on this list because I love her and I love her creativity and I love her perfumes so much. This is my favorite. This is my absolute favorite from her line. It is Supernova Sway. Supernova Sway is just, it's, a fantastic t kind of um, fantasy fragrance. There isn't anything about this scent that is really like, um, I just put some on the back of my hand. There isn't anything about this scent that is really able to be described in typical like, oh, it's a, a fougere or sheep or gourmand or, no, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy fragrance. Um, I'm going to read to you what Yvonne from Darling Clandestine has written about it just to help you understand the vision behind the scent, but um, I'll tell you how I feel about it once that's done. If I can find it. So Supernova Sway, if black metallic had a fragrance, it would be this. Dark and bright and dark and bright again. Deep musks streaked with mint, black resins with subtle flashes of orchid and buttery honeysuckle. It's a unisex fragrance. When you think, like, if you've ever imagined in your head, like, in the 80s, like, 70s, 80s, kids in like New York, um, like New York neighborhoods, you know, knocking the fire hydrant and playing on the street, music blaring from a boom box. Um, it's, it can be any ethnicities. There's no, like, there's no, they, there's nothing pinned onto these people. It's just the environment. It's just the idea. Um, a hot maybe car parked nearby, people sitting on the porch, there's flowers in the flower box. It's just a gathering of people enjoying the heat of the summer and the camaraderie of their neighbors. 
that's what this smells like to me it doesn't even have to be like a new york new york <laughs> um but this can be anywhere any city any neighborhoods neighbors children adults and there's hot metal from a car nearby there's sweet floral minty somewhat um bright scents floating in the air there's a little bit of wetness there's just it's, it's transportative it just when i wear supernova sway i feel like a a person in a, a novel like i feel like i'm being transported to a place and time and that's what is like so great about the scent um what's so great about darling clandestine is just the nature of the way the fragrances make you feel and a supernova sway makes me it gives me the feeling that I yearn for something that I've never actually experienced in this lifetime. Um, something that I want or miss or felt and that I want back. So yeah, Supernova Sway. This one is not available for sale right now. I've asked her, I've asked, I've asked Yvonne a couple of times. I've hinted to, to redo, to release it, but I don't know if she's able to do that. So it may never be available for sale so um i'm sorry about that but that is my one of my favorite like that is one of my absolute favorite indie fragrances of all time so now you're probably wondering what's number one <laughs> you're like well how can what's number one you said you needed number one in your life oh baby i do i absolutely do number one on this list is from house of Gloy. so you should if you followed me for a while or if you watch my indie videos you probably should already know what it's going to be um and it's vice this is the eau de parfum i have the perfume oil i have the body lotion is over by my bed um i'm not going to spray this one on me because um it is I don't want it to, it's not going to mix well with the other fragrances that I've sprayed, but this is, first of all, just the fragrance alone is a beautiful gourmand scent. It is coffee, it's marshmallow, it's tobacco, it's graham cracker, chocolate. It's like having a s'mores with a Turkish coffee at the train station and somebody is smoking a cigarette near you. Uh, House of Gloy <laughs> literally, literally says, House of Gloy says, steam billows rolling off a vessel fre of fresh made Turkish coffee, marshmallow goo tainted by graham cracker crumbs, toasted hazelnuts, and blanketed in black chocolate. It is the perfect gourmand fragrance. It is the perfect gourmand. <laughs> um, I love it more than any other like pretty much any other fragrance I own if somebody came to me and they were like you can have a lifetime of access to vice or a lifetime access to angel I would probably choose vice I love it that much Angel's my signature scent, but Vice is like holy grail status perfume. So the reason that I say that I need this fragrance is because of the scent properties for me is very, very comforting. The scent the itself, it's so warm, it's cocooning, and I put it on. I use the lotion at night, especially when I'm struggling with um, insomnia. I put the fragrance oil on when I'm having anxiety attacks or panic attacks. To me, this is a fragrance that's also like a healing, 
essential part of my life. When I'm really nervous about somewhere that I'm going to go, when I know that I have somewhere very stressful, like a, uh, a new doctor's appointment or an interview or something, I will put Vice on. It doesn't matter if I put it on before I go, like right before I go, or if I put it on earlier in the day to just help me calm down as I get ready. Like, I, I could not imagine not having this fragrance in my life, so I pray that it never gets discontinued. I know that with indie fragrances especially, that's always a possibility as components become hard to source or too expensive, or if just the, um, the, the ability to make the fragrance is not there. I just hope that never happens. I hope that never happens with Vice. It's happened with a couple of fragrances that I really felt the same way about as Vice. Um, so I have to pray that that never happens. So my number one all-time indie fragrance favorite and one of my favorite fragrances, just literally in general, my whole collection, House of Gloy Vice. All right, you guys, that was it. That is my top five for life indie fragrance edition. If you want more information about any of these scents, let me know in the comments. I probably won't do a video about them, but I could definitely write up a community post or just anything to give you information if you would like. But for the most part, I've already talked about all of these scents in other videos. So I will have all of those in cards or linked down below for you. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing some of my favorite indie scents lately, and I plan to do more indie fragrance videos in the future as I am getting into fall and winter because that's when all of the best sets come out, and I really start buying a bunch of indie fragrances. So be on the lookout for those videos if you want to know more about indie brands or indie fragrances in general. If you have any indie brands that you would like me to purchase and review, I can definitely do that. I actually, I have a bunch of samples. I'm thinking about re-reviewing some older scents that I've sampled, um, but I know there's a lot of houses that I want to try that I haven't gotten to. So if you have one that you're interested in and would like to suggest to me, leave in the comments down below because I might already have a sample or have tried in the past and just haven't talked about them because they didn't work, but I'd be happy to follow up with any other indie fragrances that you're interested in. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, and if you haven't subscribed, do so before you go, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!